Hey everyone, Shark here. Tonight, what we're going to do is go over the multiplayer balance patch notes from Company of Heroes 3 patch 1.9, Orchid Spider. There's a lot going on here, a lot to discuss. So like I said, I'm going to focus on the balance stuff in particular. Uh, and with that, grab a drink. Let's get started. All right. So we're going to start out here with the general changes. Uh, the big focus, at least initially, is on the manpower and upkeep, right? So they've actually standardized the upkeep, which I appreciate, and I'll explain how this works in a second. So team weapons and placements, officer units, ultralight vehicles, and grenadiers have an upkeep of 1. All vehicles and other infantry units have an upkeep of 1.5. So the upkeep is essentially the unit's population cost multiplied by either 1 for team weapons and placements, etc., or by 1.5 for vehicles and infantry units. And that amount is what is subtracted from your manpower income that you pay in upkeep every minute to have those units on the field. So what's the, what this is designed to do is basically uh, slow your resource rate when you have higher value units on the field. In particular, what they're trying to do here is vehicles and then infantry units. And you see the focus is on basically making it less sustainable to have an army composition with tons of mainline infantry. And that's reinforced here in the reinforcement cost changes. So across the board, what it looks like is generally a 10% increase in reinforcement costs per model um, at, straight down the line here, right? So 25 to 28 for HMG mortar indirect fire crews, that's just above 10%. But what they're really going to pick on, you'll see, are the anti-tank gun crews and the mainline infantry. So AT guns, 25 to 29, so that's like a 15% increase. And then U.S. forces, you see, for example, scouts, 25 to 28, that's a little over 10%. But riflemen, 26 to 30, again, that's closer to 15. Uh, paratroopers, 28 to 33. SSF commandos, 28 to 33, um, that's closer to 15. Rangers, four, 45 to 50, they're, man, they are pricey, um, but that's basically a 10% increase. So for the USF, you see they're mainly picking on rifles, paras, and commandos here uh, with the major nerfs to reinforcement costs. Then for Wehrmacht, you really see it a little bit in Grenadiers. You actually don't see uh, Jaegers and Panzer Grenadiers are at 32 compared to Rifle Squad at 30, right? So uh, Wehrmacht uh, advanced infantry still very much incentivized in the current patch. Um, everything else is a 10% increase across the board. For the Brits, the infantry sections really pay here with a 15% increase, uh, but their elites actually really don't get touched as much. So commandos, only increase of 2, uh, 33 to 35. Australian Light Infantry, 28 to 31. Gurkhas, 33 to 35. Um, and we'll talk about what this means later. And then finally, for the for the DAC, you see Panzer Grenadiers, 28 to 32. So that's a 15% increase. Um, Guastatori, even though they got bumped to 39, still feel very, very inexpensive compared to the Rangers at 50, uh, Stostrupin at 44. So what this is trying to do is basically punish you for sloppy infantry play, right? Because the initial cost of the infantry hasn't really changed. The upkeep has shifted a little bit, but losing models, bleeding models over and over again it'll feel like you have a lot less manpower in the middle of the game. Uh, in the, the previous patch, in 1.8, it typically felt like light vehicles are too expensive based on fuel. Uh, but a lot of times, especially as Americans, and if you were winning, you would feel in the middle of the game like you were flush with manpower. And some of the casts we've had recently, like guys are floating 700, 1,000 manpower, and they're not spending it because they don't know what to spend it on. And so some players would literally just use that to spam rifles or AT guns. That's going to be disincentivized in this patch. It's going to be very expensive to reinforce uh, any losses. And then also the upkeep you're going to pay uh, is going to significantly change that. So that's probably the biggest takeaway from this. I honestly expect, uh, and, and we'll discuss afterwards, but I expect light vehicles to have a little bit of a resurgence because if you try to play really infantry heavy, if you go the meta uh, from the previous patch of three to five main lines, uh, you're going to bleed a lot. But what this will do, though, is incentivize varied infantry play because a lot of the elites didn't have the same increase in reinforcement cost. So you get better bang for your buck in terms of on-field performance versus reinforcement cost. At least that's what it looks like uh, in concept <laughs> right now, in theory. On-field reinforcement. Uh, so the out-of-combat penalty, basically, for, for reinforcing squads outside the base sector 
Uh, it goes from 100% to 150%. So again, just slower reinforcement either the for, forward reinforcement. Yeah, uh, excuse me, forward reinforcement points uh, or med trucks. Tank traps now properly block incoming projectiles. That's nice. Forward retreat points. If you activate a forward retreat point on a uh, munitions cache or a fuel cache. Uh, it'll automatically toggle on when the construction uh, or the upgrade completes. Light artillery, the LEIG, the pack howitzer, and the 4.2 inch heavy mortar for the Brits. They're essentially what's happening is their uh, auto fire scatter is increasing. Uh, the the max is going to increase. The distance ratio is going to increase, and the minimum range is going to increase. So they're less likely to feel like laser guided weapons that snipe uh, your units at long range when they're being auto fired. It's going to reward. Uh, good micro use of the barrage and then also by increasing the minimum range it'll allow infantry to approach a little safer i know the 4.2 inch heavy mortar in particular felt a little bit like a really overpowered grenade launcher as you approached it it could take shots at you and, and really burn you down um, the aoe damage uh, you'll see the the area effect damage reduced a little bit it's mainly designed, uh, if it hits, lands directly on you, to just be a little bit less oppressive, but the overall, like you'll see the far AOE hasn't changed. So um, this is especially important considering now that all the reinforcement costs for infantry have gone up so much. Uh, indirect, I think, is gonna be uh, more important in this patch because of its ability to burn down infantry and impose bleed on your opponent. Resource caches now, uh, they re get reduced damage from indirect fire and they gain health when upgraded as a forward retreat point. Um, I think this is a good change. I very rarely saw people using the resource caches themselves as a forward retreat point. Um, is, they are very easy to knock out. <clears throat> HMG changes. Um, so especially for the machine guns that were not the MG42, HMGs really struggled to, to control blobbing. Um, you really notice it against some of the more like elite infantry that inherently take less suppression. They could just kind of roll right through the machine gun's arc, take a full burst, still not be suppressed, and then the point of the machine guns kind of move. So across the board, area suppression has been standardized to one. I think what this means is that you're going to see machine guns will more reliably suppress uh, enemy infantry, which makes machine guns more viable. The M1919, the US HMG, uh, in particular, got a pretty significant bonus. Uh, so accuracy for all the machine guns has increased across the board. That's going to increase the amount of uh, damage uh, and kills that machine guns get. But now uh, the M1919 also gets a 20% damage reduction when set up. Um, so it, it's kind of a reflection of the, the changes in the 1.7 TTK update. Um, what this will do is make the machine gun just a little bit more survivable when it's not moving around, when it's set up so that units can't frontally clear it with some of the high DPS weapons uh, like the LMGs. The cover combat veterancy uh, will actually uh, improve that defensive setup so it improves that damage reduction bonus from 20% to 30%. They sh uh, shifted the button now, uh, the button ability uh, to a timed ability rather than a targeted ability. Uh, so it'll function like the white phosphorus rounds on MG42, and they slightly increase the manpower cost to 240 to reflect uh, the increased efficacy. For MG42, uh, again, you're just going to see accuracy increase across the board. The numbers look lower, right, than the M1919. You got to remember the accuracy is calculated per shot, and MG42 has an extremely high fire rate. So this is really going to burn uh, units down if you're not careful. I think the MG42 is going to be the go-to. Uh, start for Vermont coming out of this uh, increased area suppression radius this was already pretty oppressive mg42s are now going to be able to really uh shove people aside mg34 and the vickers see an accuracy increase the vickers accuracy is just insane the vickers is still going to be that sniper hmg all right anti tank guns this is the other i think really big change from this patch uh so at guns are having their setup time increased and their cost increased by 20 across the board so the intent here is to incentivize people to set up their anti-tank guns ahead of time rather than just attack move blobs at them across the map to deal with vehicles. So that extra half second of setup time should allow you, if you're using vehicles, you see an AT gun and it's, it's being attack moved, to react to that. And maybe you take one hit, but now you're not as at, at as much risk of taking two. Uh, notably, the two pounders unaffected by the changes. So the the role of the two pounders being refined, it's a little bit of a more reactive wide arc 
lower penetration but higher fire rate AT gun. Uh, the LG40 uh, has a faster setup time but is also still being increased uh, by a half second. Um, and then territory points and victory points now provide experience to essentially scout units. So scouts, pathfinders, artillery observers, they're all variations of the scout on the US side, the Ket and Krod, the Krod Schutzen, the 4x4, basically the Jeep, and the M29 Weasel. And all units in the capture circle that are capable of gaining experience, gain experience. So uh, in the interest of highlighting potentially a uh, an exploit, if you're going to spam scouts or pathfinders, you can get them some experience and start to build their veterancy by having multiple ones on the same point when the capture actually goes through. Sorry for highlighting that, um, but that's going to be a thing. Victory points, what they've done is the capture time has been increased, but the revert time has been reduced. They also provide experience. Um, so it's longer to capture victory point, but I think quicker to uh, neutralize a victory point. And then attack loiters. The skill planes, they are reducing the health of offensive base loiters to make it easier for anti-air to deny these capabilities and prevent them from getting additional passes after the first strike. Um, I'm a little bit worried because I think the Axis just have better and more consistent anti-air than the, than the allies. We'll see how this plays out. But either way, massive health reduction from 1800 to 1350 uh, for the P-47, basically the anti-infantry strike from the U.S. Special Operations Battle Group. The Stuka anti tank loiter from DAC armored support, the Stuka loiter from Wehrmacht Luftwaffe, and the Hawker Typhoon anti tank loiter from the British Air and Sea Battle Group. What you're going to see here is that they might get one pass off, but if you have anti air, it should knock down uh, those airplanes and keep it from being oppressive or being an area denial tool. And then finally, they've made some changes here to vehicle pathing to avoid some of the more awkward pivots that leave you sitting there saying, oh my God, what is this thing doing? All right, so now getting into the U.S. changes. So the first thing, rearm and retrofit has been removed from the mechanized support center. Instead, what you're getting is the ability to unlock engineer salvage, right, which allows engineers to salvage wrecks. Um, it costs 125 manpower and 15 fuel to research. I'm going to withhold my opinion on this until I see what the wrecks actually provide in terms of salvage. Um, I actually think, uh, in my opinion, this should be what comes with the mechanized support center for free as like a free benefit. And then potentially uh, that repair point uh, is an unlock that you pay for. Um, but this could be interesting. So it remains to be seen how much it costs. But now at least you have that ability available to you without having to go armored battle group and getting the wrecker. Scout and sniper stealth reconnaissance has gotten a rework. So it will no longer de-trigger in combat. Instead, the unit will engage if it's spotted. Um, the scout recons will no longer uh, will no longer crawl around in prone, and the speed penalty on the stealth recon has changed from seventy percent to fifty percent. So they be able to move around a little bit better. It makes it a little bit more of a um, an option that you might actually take for the scouts uh, over the passive healing or the med kit for the sniper. The scouts have also gotten or the regular scouts have gotten a new veterancy option. So instead of passive healing, you get the ability uh, smoke drop. So it drops a smoke grenade when the squad is given a retreat order and it's free with a 40 second recharge time. Um, so I, I really like this one. It improves the, uh, the survivability of the scouts, but also uh, you can potentially use this as a smoke grenade. If you work your scouts in and use it to block line of sight, just conveniently retreat them. So some interesting play uh, opportunities there. Uh, they increase the artillery observer and pathfinder experience requirements a little bit. Um, looks like 200 for the first veterancy, 600 for the second, and then 1200 for the third. That's to reflect the fact that you gain veterancy from capturing points now. So makes sense to me. The uh, M3 armored personnel carrier half track. This is the base half track. Got a significant uh, revamp to its machine gun uh, just across the board. It'll produce significantly more damage. So now... There could be value in having a vanilla half track on the field. Uh, it'll do damage to infantry at range. That bleed is really helpful. I think the half track remains uh, a little bit vulnerable, but early on um, you get it out there and you can use it again to recruit team weapons, to reinforce your squads. Um, obviously, if you get the med upgrade, it removes the weapon. So no healing unless you do that. But uh, improved machine gun performance across the board. Uh, will definitely help make this more viable and I think lead to some more weapon support center builds. The Hellcat tank destroyer is getting a little bit of a tune-up. 
Um, so what they want it to be is a cheap, fast moving tank destroyer that's efficient, but not overbearing, right? It's not supposed to be a brawler, uh, but it's supposed to be able to kind of shoot and move very quickly. So now uh, it gets a new ability open topped. It gains plus seven vision when it's stationary. Uh, and then its first strike veterancy ability has been replaced with shoot and scoot. So when it is stationary and then fires, it gains 15% speed and 20% acceleration for six seconds. So, uh, and then this refreshes when it fires every time uh, while stationary. I really like this. So you set up, right? You can set up kind of forward, use the open top to get additional uh, vision. And then enemy vehicle comes into view. You get the shot off. First shot hits quick, and then you're able to back up or relocate uh, with additional speed and acceleration, um, and then do that over and over again. So this will make it feel, I think, a little bit more like an actual tank destroyer, uh, where it relies on its speed and maneuverability, long range, and heavy hitting cannon to deal with tanks that are much tankier than, uh, than the Hellcat should be. Uh, and then the other veteran ability choice replacing long range barrage is the HVAP rounds. Uh, again, I really like this. Uh, so high velocity armor piercing rounds, the long range barrage didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, and then first strike, uh, was a, always a little bit bugged with the machine gun, sometimes setting it off. So this is good. So you either can focus on maneuverability with shoot and scoot, or you can focus on the additional penetration with the HVAP rounds. Uh, and now you don't have to do the mechanized support center to get the viability of the Hellcat. So good changes there. Uh, the Sherman tanks across the board are getting pretty consistent machine gun bonuses as well. As you can see, their coax and hull machine gun accuracy increase literally double accuracy at close range and then triple to 400% accuracy increase at far range. And so the goal here is for the machine guns to provide consistent DPS at all ranges against infantry. So you're not relying on the RNG of the main gun. Um, coax, machine gun cooldown reduced, the 50 cal, the basically the top mounted machine gun, far accuracy increased. Um, and now the standard Sherman also gets smoke launchers by default. I love this. You can use it. This incentivizes use of the standard Sherman, which right now um, in the in the previous version had been kind of a meme. You would almost always want the bulldozer or the Hellcat. Now you have a reason to have a Sherman on the field, but you can smoke uh, enemy team weapons. You can burn down infantry, and then you still have the ability to ward off vehicles a little bit. So I think we're gonna see some more standard Shermans in this patch. Next, the Pack Howitzer finally has a veterancy ability. The US and British forces variants of the Pack Howitzer in the last several patches haven't had an, gotten a new ability at Vet 1. So here it's gonna be for 25 munitions, you can launch white phosphorus rounds, six shells with moderate scatter, deals burn damage and blocks vision. And then the Greyhound has also had, had its great, uh, veterancy abilities revamped. So this is either to allow it to specialize. It's going to be an anti-infantry specialist with the canister rounds, which I think we're all familiar with. Um, now they're not tied to the mechanized support center. Now it is a timed ability that costs 35 munitions and is available at vet one. The other option is Raider, which allows the Greyhound to decapture territory with a speed of two. So you can get in and quickly decap an enemy's point, um, provide some pretty interesting potential that cut off play with the Greyhound. Uh, the can rounds can be really good, but the one there's a munitions cost, so they can't really be abused. And it's a timed ability, so there's the risk reward calculus there. If you come across a vehicle and now you're shooting useless weapons uh, for 15 seconds. The paratroopers uh, are being kind of distinguished a little bit from the other U.S. infantry uh, in two ways. One, they've had their veterancy changed, so no more concealed paratroopers. Uh, but the biggest change is they can reinforce out of combat. So you have to manually do it uh, by hitting, you know, F or whatever the key is to uh, for you to reinforce. But when they're out of combat, um, they don't need to be near a half track or use the para drop reinforcements ability. They can just reinforce on their own. Uh, and then the veteran C that basically allows them to stay on the field longer. So I, I like that in general. And then uh, so their veteran C abilities have been shifted. So the one that replaces concealment is packed explosives, which increases the damage and explosion radius of all grenades and satchel charges by 25%. That'll make these para grenades uh, <laughs> really, really dangerous. Um, so I like this, but season hold is also a good option. So it increases capture rate by 33%. And then when a paratrooper unit is within 10 meters of any territory or victory point, they gain 15% damage reduction. That is extremely powerful if you need them to hold the line 
Remember, that's a damage reduction. That, so that's basically like Guastatory or Stoss Troopin. Flat damage reduction of 15% just by being near a territory or victory point. Um, this is going to be really interesting. I don't know which one of these I'm going to choose, but I'm definitely going to experiment with both of them. For the Advanced Infantry Battle Group or the Rangers, uh, the Artillery Observers, monitoring the beacon speeds up the recharge time of the barrages from 20 to 15 seconds. Um, minor thing, but it's use makes it a little bit more useful to have your Artillery Observers in that mode. The Frontline Medical Tent has increased to 275 manpower. Uh, this feels fair. Uh, it makes it a little bit more of a bigger investment. Um, and then makes it more satisfying when you're able to knock out that medical tent. The ammo storage, uh, greater bonus to the reload and ability recharge bonuses it provides from 33% to 40%, but now properly explodes on death and deals heavy damage to infantry standing beside it. So you got to be pretty careful where you put it and make sure the enemy doesn't find it and knock it out. Then uh, finally, for the special operations battle group, uh, the weasel here gets veterancy from capturing points, but they've increase the veterancy requirements a little bit across the board to basically reflect the fact that if you cap a couple points in the previous iteration uh, with the lower veterancy, uh, you would have vet one almost immediately, which could be exploited by the, uh, the comms cables. And then, oh, I love my dog. This is exactly what you want. Uh, finally, the SSF commando squad. And this is what Kenny, my dog, is very excited about. Okay, so got the dog settled. Last thing on the USF side, the SSF Commando Squad. So they now have camouflage. So this differentiates them from the other US infantry squads. Basically, they give them camouflage as a base as opposed to a veterancy ability for the paratroopers, right? And this allows them to, in the minor relic, pick their battles, use the right weapons, gives them a brief boost to their combat performance. So they can fight when they're camouflaged in cover, they gain the ambush bonuses when attacking camouflage. Um, I like this because they arrive so late, that bonus probably gives them some help dealing with the better Axis infantry that are kind of on the field at that point. Um, their health has been reduced from 110 to 100, um, so this feels like it's going to hurt. They may bleed a little bit, uh, but if they're in cover using the ambush bonus, if you use them effectively, I think they'll still hit really hard. And then the weapon swap time increased from 5 to 15 seconds. I really like this. So you can't just spam the weapon swap. You have to be very deliberate about how you use your commandos. So you, you need to know, are they there for a vehicle ambush? Are they there to deal with infantry? Because 15 seconds is a long time for two members of the squad to not be shooting. So that wraps up the US uh, onto Wehrmacht. All right, so for Wehr, Panzer Grenadiers, uh, the only change to these guys outside of the veterancy, which we'll get at, uh, the speed penalty for automatic fire now starts at 60% and increases to 85% maximum. So uh, previously, essentially, as the, the ability kind of went on, their movement would slow over time. But they still move relatively quickly enough that they could very easily dodge grenades. Now the speed penalty is going to be really significant and increase, basically force them to move at a crawl. So the counter now to the uh, the V for victory button for Panzer Grenadiers is going to be grenades. So. Um, I'm sure Tightrope will test this, but I'm really looking forward to see what happens when PGRENs uh, and paratroopers are at close range. The paratroopers have the packed explosives and throw a uh, cooked frag grenade at Panzer Grenadiers trying to use automatic fire. That sounds like a fun thing uh, for Tightrope to test out. So uh, please do that, bud. Uh, the 251 personnel carrier, this has had similar machine gun damage changes uh, as the US M3 half track right so pretty significant buff to its machine gun damage this means that it's a value add even without the stummel or the med half track uh, upgrade so you can get this on the field um, and this could be really helpful if you get the panzer grenadier company out early um, but you want to avoid bleed getting one of these vehicles out um, and then you can upgrade to the stummel or if you don't need it uh, you can go for the med half track for the forward reinforcement 221 has also got an accuracy buff to its machine gun, right? The goal here is to make this unit dangerous to early game infantry that are unsupported. And then its signal detection range has been increased to make it function a little bit more like the DAC 254 reconnaissance tractor, right? So this gives the 221 some longevity in the game. Uh, I like these changes as well. The Martyr 3M sight main gun toggle off recharge time adjusted from seven to five seconds. So this just makes it a little bit easier to use the Martyr 3 sight main gun and then move it around if you need to. Um, so some good uh, buffs here to the Luftwaffe company. 
I think the meta for Vare for a while has been the Panzer Grenadier company. So good changes there. The Fallschirm Jaeger squad. I I feel like Fallschirm Jaegers for me either her, like were horrendously underperforming or suddenly were just Terminators running across the map when they got veterancy. So it feels like across the board, the perception is they've been underperforming um, because they're not super survivable as a four man unit. So their pop cap cost has redu been reduced from 10 to nine. And then their near and long range cooldowns have been reduced. So they'll do more damage. So according to Relic, they want to continue to make it a glass cannon style unit. Um, but so high damage output, but still susceptible uh, to incoming damage. I think the counter is going to be vehicles, but remember they they still have a Panzer Faust, so you can't dive them with light vehicles like you can Stastrupen or Panzer Grenadiers. So we'll see how how Fallschirm Jaegers fare. The LG40 anti tank gun team uh, has its HE round penetration set to 30. Uh, I couldn't tell you what that means functionally. The Vespa self propelled artillery now it gets a tracking barrage instead of a creeping barrage. This is really interesting. So it'll fire three shells at the target and keep tracking it so long as it retains vision. So if you do a good job spotting, uh, you'll be able to hit a target multiple times, even if it executes micro dodges. My only concern here is, you know, if you're on the receiving end of this, how do you know that you're being tracked? But it does allow for some pretty cool micro uh, play with with the Wehrmacht. If you've got a Kettenkrod that's camouflaged or using the, the long range spotting ability, there's some interesting things you can do here. So uh, I'll, I'll withdraw a judgment for now, but I, I generally like this addition. And then the coastals, it looks like, have gotten some love. The designate defensive line CP cost has been reduced from two to one. They pretty significantly nerfed that ability. Uh, it's not as overpowered as it was when it provided uh, healing and repairs and a whole host of other things. But they've reduced the CP cost and they've reduced the CP cost of call the reserves with the goal essentially being allowing quick access to the left end of the coastal battle group tree. And then the artillery officers, artillery overwatch, initial delay reduced from four to two. They basically, they had nerfed a, the artillery officer quite a bit, um, requiring it to retain its own side of the target area. Uh, it could be interrupted by suppression. So now in response, they're trying to make artillery overwatch a little bit more useful by reducing that initial delay. Um, with coastals, I feel like if they're used well, they're really, really powerful. This is only going to help. Um, but sometimes they're a little bit of a meme unit. Uh, so we'll see where that goes there. And now for the Brit changes. So first off, the Bishop. So it has the direct fire ability. The recharge speed has been reduced from 30 to 5. Uh, this is awesome. So now if you charge a Bishop and you're not prepared for it and it's got some veterancy, it can direct fire your units. Uh, so there's a little bit of a risk reward there. The Bishop, uh, bishop can be pretty squishy. But this direct fire is absolutely nasty. Uh, so interested to see how people that are building, you know, three or four or five bishops in team games then use these to go ahead and delete their enemies' units. The Stuart Light Tank manpower cost has been reduced by 20 from 280 to 260. This is probably necessary considering how much more infantry bleed there's going to be in the mid game. Uh, so no, honestly, it probably doesn't change much there. The Crusader 2 uh, was a little too effective against medium tanks, even from the front. I, I agree with this. So penetration reduction across the board at all ranges. Um, and then they've increased the moving accuracy from the upgun, the Crusader 3 version. So I think what they want to do is force you to choose what the Crusader 2 is being used for. If it's anti-infantry, you stay with the 2. And if you need it to fight vehicles, you upgun it to the 3. Um, and it, the Crusader 3 is going to be your anti-tank bridge unit until you can tech grants. So uh, good changes there. The Australian Defense Battle Group got a bunch of changes here. Um, increased rewards for the supply run. Um, you see this from time to time. I mean, I think if you're going to use it because it tells the enemy you're going to use it, I think increasing the rewards makes sense. The Australian Light Infantry have got a pretty significant rifle accuracy buff. Um, 10 to 20% at all ranges and an increase in their scope rifle far accuracy. This is going to be nasty. Australian infantry starts are going to be really, really hard to deal with, with the exception of potentially uh, machine guns. So if you see Aussies, I think you're going to need a machine gun out uh, and start to use some cover. And then the Aussies are going to have to be backed up uh, with a mortar or some sort of snare unit. But um, yeah, I think Australian infantry are going to be even more viable uh, in this patch. So, uh, you yeah, know, we'll see where that goes. 
17 pounder and a tank emplacement manpower cost reduction makes sense emplacements especially ones that show up that late are just so vulnerable to indirect hold the line duration has been increased from 30 to 45 the creeping barrage munition cost from 200 to 180 i think this is fair it is powerful but it's fairly telegraphed and so a little bit of a munitions cost reduction you'll see it get used more especially because it's balanced against the archer uh the air and sea battle group got some um pretty significant changes as well so the commando section um their accuracy increased by about 10 percent across the board uh commandos are still are going to be even better uh, at short range but then what they're doing here is the pack howitzer and the commando support section which is pre which is uh, replacing the lmg section these guys are uh, available at zero command point cost so you'll be able to get these relatively early basically it's one command point to or two command points to unlock the commandos and then you get the immediate next layer of that battle group for free the commando support section i think you can only have one of them but it's there to support the rest of your so if you want to play a commando heavy build you can um, it allows you to reinforce your other commando units off of the support section um, obviously doesn't function during combat and then also allows you to call in a hawker strafing run so it's like a little bit of an officer unit that supports other commandos i can see this being really fun in team games um and then your other option is the m1 pack howitzer and it's the same uh as the u.s pack howitzer right it gets white phosphorus at veteran c1 so uh, i like this for the air and sea battle group if you want to play with commandos you go for the support section um and you can get a commando heavy build with a lot of synergy if you don't you just grab the pack howitzer and you roll on with your bad self uh, the Hawker Typhoon anti-tank loiter command point has increased. I think that's just designed to make sure that even though the earlier stuff is cheaper, this doesn't arrive any sooner. The incendiary carpet bombing run, assault flares, and naval bombardment have had a command post, uh, command point cost increase as well. Um, so that's basically to ensure that the late game abilities show up in the late game and not in the mid game. Uh, the field infirmary requires you to, to now purchase the forward retreat but it also increases the health uh, by 120 of that point. And then the British Armored Battle Group, uh, the light vehicle withdrawal and refit ability increases the munitions cost from 30 to 40. I think this is pretty inconsequential, um, but probably just makes it a little bit less exploitative. There was that build back in the day where you go two or three dingoes into two or three humbers into two or three stewards or crusaders that could feel really oppressive. So a little bit less viable there. And then the Indian Artillery Battle Group Gurkha Rifles, they just modify the IO Gurkha Lee, their VET 1 ability. It now provides a 50% speed buff and debuffs nearby enemy infantry accuracy by 40%. If you haven't seen this paired with the uh, Warcry ability, um, yeah, give it a shot. It's pretty awesome. And now on to the DAC. So the first thing, I, and I love this change. The fire support and support elements upgrades are now now unlock each other when purchased. So if you go uh, light support company or you go mechanized company, at either one, if you do it side tech, it unlocks the side tech for both. So I love this because I think this will increase the range of viable builds for DAC because you can still invest in the fire support elements and get your AT guns out, get an LEIG, but now you have access to the Stug D without a crazy additional side tech. Uh, or the wrecker if you want it. I think this just opens up flexibility for DAC. I, I love this change. The uh, LEIG mechanized group. Um, so all the mechanized groups were 275 manpower. Uh, this one, like the LEIG by itself, if you built it from tier two, was 330 manpower. So you were getting a pretty significant discount there when you include the half track call in. They are increasing the cost from 275 to 325. So it's still a deal but it's less of a deal uh, than it was previously. So good change. The Panzer Grenadier squad is getting a new veteran C ability. It's called mechanized advance. So when they're garrisoned in, ve garrisoned in vehicles or 15, for 15 seconds post disembarkation, they capture 33% faster and have 15% additional weapon accuracy. Um, I think this is good. Their focus fire ability was like the weakest of the press V to win veteran C abilities. So this makes sense and also encourages you to play uh, with vehicles. So it might have looked like a meme before, but I think you're going to see a lot more of uh, DAC soldiers riding on vehicles, which is uh, consistent with the theme of the faction. So uh, I like that. The 250 light carrier and its variants are getting a front armor buff. 
this makes sense, right? You have all that armor penetration. These guys felt uh, from the last patch, right? Um, all rifles have 1.5 penetration at short range now. So they've just increased the frontal armor slightly from 5.5 to 6.5. And then when you get the 250 slash 9 upgrade, it goes from 7 to 8. The combat half tracks armor bonus goes from 4 to 5. So just make them a little bit more durable because right now playing heavily with half tracks, um, you could just get them burned down by standard mainline infantry. And I think they want to make them a little bit more resilient to that and force the enemy to, to build some sort of anti-vehicle uh, munition or force to deal with your half tracks, which makes sense. It also provides a little bit more durability so you can take use of the Panzer Grenadier Mechanized Advance or the Assault Grenadier Disembark, which has, has received some changes. So um, Assault Disembark now grants plus 15% damage reduction when active. So it doesn't make them sprint, or maybe maybe it does, maybe they didn't remove that. But 15% damage reduction and it no longer has a cooldown after being activated. It re-triggers if the unit garrisons the transport and then disembarks. Um, so pretty cool. I don't. I would prefer this to be reduced uh, received accuracy reduction as opposed to damage reduction. But it'll make your assault grenadiers a little chunkier when they arrive. Like later in the game, I think this is necessary because they're you know vet zero and other units can be vet two. Um, however, uh, I have some people really rush assault grenadiers and have a lot of success. I feel like that's going to be more likely uh, with this build, especially if you go uh, half track heavy early to avoid the manpower bleed. So watch out for assault grenadier uh, spam, maybe uh, in games against that coming forward. The other thing, smoke grenades no longer require vet one. I love this change. Um, I think smoke grenades are really in required for assault grenadiers, especially with the changes to the HMGs. They really need to help break in sight lines and close in the distance. So I like this uh, no longer require vet one. The MG34, it's a, a change to their veteran ability. So basically, uh, they get plus 75% accuracy, but they don't suppress. So basically, it turns them into a big DPS machine. Um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the MG34, uh, and I don't know that they need this, but it is an option for you if you choose to go that route. The 8-rod, so now we're starting to see some changes between the DAC and the Wehrmacht 8-rod. Um, normally I like to see units be the same across factions, but in this, I'm okay with like different costs, especially because the Wehrmacht 8 rod is a call-in. Um, but in this case, they're also adding some auto cannon penetration. So DAC 8 rods will be better at dealing with, uh, enemy light vehicles, um, at, at short range. And then if you remember, if you get them with the, uh, tungsten, uh, rounds upgrade from the DAC armory, they'll be even better. Uh, and then the fuel cost has been reduced from 55 to 50. I think this makes sense. Um, I felt like after the light vehicle fuel cost nerfs at 55 fuel, eight rods just showed up way too late to deal with the allied infantry spam. Um, now you get an option. So if the enemy continues to insist on playing with super high levels of infantry in this patch, you can get a couple of eight rods out and really try to burn them down. Save yourself some manpower so you can get the DAC armory upgrades. Um, so I, I think this is a good change. The Marta 3 tank destroyer. Uh, it new veteran ability travel speed. It's a passive that increases its speed by 30% when out of combat. I love this. The martyr is so hard to use. Um, so this allows you to move it around a little bit quicker and relocate it. Uh, so both of these changes, I really like all of these changes, honestly, to the, uh, the side teching as well, make DAC tier three, the mechanized company much more viable. So you're going to see different DAC builds, which uh, I'm a big fan of. And then um, down here, the walking Stuka half track, because it shows up so late and it's so expensive, they've just buffed its area of effect distance and area of effect damage. And then the creeping barrage no longer shares a cooldown. So you could potentially lost two, uh, launch two barrages back to back. The walking Stuka is going to be a menace uh, in this patch with the increases in damage and area of effect. And then uh, they made a couple changes. The L640 hate this unit uh they've increased the fuel cost slightly increased the flamethrower costs slightly increased the research uh the research time um, and now spotting scopes are mutually exclusive with the flamethrower basically they're just trying to give allied players an extra second uh to prepare for the l640s to show up i think uh, it's still going to be really powerful with the flamethrowers if if the guy is smart and he withholds them until they're upgraded and ready to go 
uh, they will still be able to cause a lot of problems if you are not prepared for their arrival. Um, so this is continue, going to continue to be a tactic that you see uh, some DAC players use. Sound the alarm now creates a reticle to indicate the radius it's affecting um, just to provide some, some, not necessarily counterplay, but awareness for the enemy. Uh, the Battlefield Espionage Battle Group has had a couple of changes as well. The Transfer Depot's command point cost has been reduced from 2 to 1. The conversion amount base increased by has been increased by 60% for both cost and the manpower gained. Um, so a little bit uh, higher cost, but higher reward there. Disruption operation, which I don't think many people used. Uh, it was cool in concept, but really hard to execute. Munition cost has been uh, decreased. The debuff apply rate has been sped up. The maximum penalty has increased by 20% and can now be used in the fog of war. So now you can set this off in advance before you start to move your units into the area. We'll see if that makes it a little bit more mainstream. Uh, and then the firestorm has been adjusted to cover a wider area, further increasing its area denial. Uh, in exchange for a much wider spread, the munitions cost has been increased by 15. Um, I, I don't really like this ability. I, th I think it's kind of frustrating to deal with. And now that it lasts longer and spreads wider, um, it'll make it more useful uh, and more frustrating to play against. So we'll just kind of have to see uh, how that goes here. All right veterancy um this is really complicated uh, but also simple at the same time so there are a million different changes every unit's got a revamp but what i like is that essentially at vet one you get one change at vet two you get two changes and at vet three you get three changes and the power of those changes increases with the veterancy so now higher veterancy really matters you won't see a ton of difference between vet one and vet zero the biggest thing is you also gain that ability, right? But VET2 over VET1 is a big deal, and VET3 over VET2 is a big deal. So what I'm going to do here is kind of highlight, um, as we go down, some of the more unique veteran C changes and some of the other general takeaways. First of all, most units, veteran C1 is a little bit of a durability buff. So you'll see um, with infantry, it's usually a received accuracy buff. With vehicles, it might be a little bit different. Uh, and then um, just remember across the board, so main lines actually get less of a benefit than elite infantry and then some support units. Um, it, so it'd be kind of interesting. It's almost incentivizing you to play with non-main line units. Um, so first off here, the engineer squad at vet two, no bonus damage taken while constructing plus three repair rate at vet three plus 10 satchel range minus 10 satchel cost. Pretty cool. Uh, scouts gain 20 health at vet three. The captain retinue gets double XP gain aura at vet three. The bazooka team at vet three gets plus 7.5 range to its steady fire bonus. At vet two, it gets plus 30% weapon penetration. That's also a big deal considering the biggest issue with bazookas right now is when they don't penetrate, not that they don't do enough damage. The sniper, US sniper at vet three gets an additional 80 health. That is nuts. Um, so this is going to be the defensive durable sniper. Uh, the Wehrmacht sniper gets some different bonuses. Um, a lot of vehicles you'll see VET 3, they get a pretty significant health boost. The AT gun, its armor piercing rounds get double duration at VET 3. Yeah, the, uh, the M4 to 1 Sherman is 76 mil variant, 30% rotation rate, 15% weapon uh, reload, weapon cooldown speed, 30% machine gun damage. Uh, vehicles at higher vet are going to drive around the map like their drivers are on amphetamines. Um, the Hellcat at vet three no longer has an accuracy penalty when moving. And then the, the recovery vehicle plus 160 health plus seven repair rate at vet three. Considering the kind of meme where you can use the record to repair units that are under fire, uh, you can probably get this thing to vet three relatively quickly and that's going to be nasty. Um, you'll see like, yeah, Paras, Pathfinders, health uh, at vet three. The weasel gets 80 health at vet three and minus 33 ability cost, 10 vision detection range. If you can keep your weasel alive, it'll be worth it. Uh, commando squad, this 20 health is not going to be as big of a buff as you think because they lost 10 base health. So you like veteran commando squads really, really uh, going to increase their durability. If you're going to play heavy with commandos, I almost consider getting the infantry support center for the survivability buff as well. 
The Rangers get minus 33% receive suppression at vet three. That's going to be nasty. Uh, Wehrmacht, 20 health at vet three, plus five Panzerfaust range. So you see kind of the, the changes here, right? The Grens uh, in the previous patch got a lot of bonuses at vet one, right? So if you, um, and I think Relic has taken this into account. The issue with Wehrmacht is you have to assume that good players are going to buy the, the veteran C upgrades, which pretty much get every unit from that headquarters to start at vet one. Um, and so grenadiers against rifles would lose, but if they come out at vet one, then suddenly they would win because of all the bonuses they got at vet one. So now, because both squads are are consistent in a 10% received accuracy buff, um, it won't really change the calculus as much. And then all the Panzerfaust buffs that happened at vet two and vet three now have been simplified. Um, so you just get that additional range at vet three. Um, I think this makes sense, especially because the Grenadiers were not hit uh, by the uh, the upkeep cost increase. Kettenkrod plus 60 health plus 50% capture and decapture speed. Lay mines with your Kettenkrod. All right, Panzer Grenadiers at vet one minus 15% received accuracy. Uh, this is, is still pretty strong at vet two, um, another 20%. Um, but at vet three, they only get an additional 15 health. Uh, their bundle grenades cost 50% less. I don't think that's a calculation that most people do. Um, I think the bundle grenades are so good, it really doesn't matter what they cost. But um, hopefully these veteran C changes will make Panzer Grenadiers just a little bit less oppressive. Um, and actually you see Jaegers get 20 health at Vet 3 as opposed to 15 for the P Gren. So you can see Relics trying to make the Tier 2 build uh, just a little bit more viable for Wehrmacht. Um, the MG42 basically gets considerably more durable as it vets up. The Wehrmacht Sniper, 25% reload and cooldown benefit at Vet 3, 35% faster weapon cooldown from it when attacking from camouflage. So the Wehrmacht Sniper is your offensive sniper, right? Super high fire rate, but a little bit fragile. The US Sniper is a little bit more defensive. It's that uh, significant health bonus. And you'll see a lot of these team weapons, they gain health at Vet 1. So the goal is to incentivize you to keep them alive longer and focus on maintaining that crew. The problem with the Wehrmacht is uh, with the upgrades from the officer's quarters, you can even recruit them at Vet 1. Veteran C3 provides the pack 40 a first strike bonus. Um, the 251 at Vet 3, Regal Mines build 75% faster and our 10 munitions cheaper. Uh, where's uh, the Cromwell with the big mine? All right, and then similarly, Across the board, Vet 3, you get major health benefits. The Stummel, the, the uh, Stug 3, the Flak 30 gets additional deflection damage at Vet 3, right? So deflection damage is the damage that you do when your weapon does not penetrate a vehicle. This means that the Flak 30 will now actually be able to counter some slightly heavier vehicles. Not like a hard counter, but it'll do damage to them. So um, with the viability of Wehrmacht Tier 2 and the increase in anti-air and the basically the susceptibility of loiters to anti-air fire. I think the Flak 30 is definitely a good choice going forward. Yeah, the Martyr 3 with plus 15 vision when main gun is sighted in addition to existing bonuses. At Vet 3, this thing's going to be able to see halfway across the map. Stoss Troopin, grenade ability is free every two minutes. Um, these guys are still going to be really good. Additional 20 health at Vet 3. Additional 60 front armor for the Broom Bear at Vet 3. Do not let your enemies brown bears fed up. Just don't do it. It's bad for your health. Uh, Falshroom Pioneers become even more chonky and 35% uh, weapon accuracy. Uh, Falshroom Pioneers at Vet 3 are going to be nasty. The Falshroom Jaegers get an additional 20 health plus 7 seconds to ambush duration. That's, that's going to be gross. The Panther Heavy Tank at Vet 3 gets plus 40 main gun damage against vehicles. This turns it from a tank into an AT gun, right? So tanks normally do 120 main gun damage. Um, AT guns do 160. The Panther can now uh, do 160 from the get-go. And at Vet 1, weapon traverse speed of 35%. Really, I mean, because you're going to get that with uh, the Tier 4 officer's quarters. Veteran C2 is where it's at. The reload and the accuracy are going what's going to make the Panther really, really nasty. The Vespa at Vet 3 gets an additional two shells fired during the tracking barrage. That's nice. The Tiger, 40% rotation rate, 25% reload speed. Turns it into an automatic 88mm uh, machine gun. Coastal Reserves, this, <laughs> this is still going to be uh, really powerful. They get the 7th man at Vet 2, 
plus 15% weapon accuracy, and then another stacking health weapon accuracy received accuracy buff. Coastals, if you can keep them alive and vet them up and then constantly keep them near bunkers for the uh, the reinforcement, uh, super powerful going forward. All right, for the Brits, at vet three, the sappers get an additional model. You know, some of the discussion on this, maybe it's a little bit of a nerf with the reinforcement cost, but think about what that does to the DPS. Um, so these guys at vet three with the received accuracy bonuses, the additional soldier, 30% burst length. Royal Engineers will be a true assault unit at Vet 3. Dingo Scout Car gets 80 health at Vet 3. Right? My, my biggest issue with a lot of these ultralight vehicle health buffs is now they can basically ignore mines, which I would almost rather have like mines do a crit that, that automatically kills the ultralights. Um, just seems like that the mine is the, the natural counter, and so to give them that much health, it's frustrating. The Vickers gets plus 10 to its weapon arc at Vet 3, so that's cool. Same with the uh, the anti-tank gun here, the 6-pounder. The, the 15 CMP truck gets 160 additional health at Vet 3. I don't know if I've ever seen one of these at Vet 3, but you know we'll go from there. The AA truck can button vehicles uh, at Vet 3 and gets an additional 80 health. Um, depends how much veterancy it gets from shooting down airplanes, which right now it is terrible at, but hopefully will be better after these buffs. The Stuart gets an additional 40 damage against vehicles. So if you keep it alive and don't refit it, you can use it to start to get into dealing with some of the, the mediums or the assault guns. The Bishop. The direct fire becomes free at Vet 3. Bishops are going to be a menace, an absolute menace this patch. The 25% weapon penetration on the Grant. I'm actually disappointed they didn't touch the penetration on the Grant's uh, 37 mil gun. I, I think it's a little overtuned right now. Um, because it penetrates the front armor of, of mediums, but um, and then this penetration buff, but we'll see how it how it plays out. The 17 pounder, it was already super accurate. Now at vet three gets an additional 100% accuracy and 40 damage. That's 280. The 17 pounder may actually be worth building in this patch. Yeah, uh, the Australian light infantry uh, are just going to be disgusting. Um, just based on their, their buffs at vet zero and then they get received accuracy and weapon accuracy and then additional speed at vet three and health. Yeah. Aussies are going to get some additional play this time around. Um, the black prints, it, the changes are fine. I actually, I wish it would get, be a little bit faster. Um, I feel like it just, it takes too long to hit the field and then it doesn't move fast enough and it can be easily overwhelmed in comparison to the tiger. Um, so a little frustrated to see it didn't get any love there. And then honestly, the, the DAC changes so far have been pretty vanilla, right? Standard like received accuracy bonuses for infantry, health bonuses at VET3 for their vehicles. Nothing really earth shattering here. The recovery vehicle um, gets 160 health and plus seven repair speed at VET3. That's consistent with the US record. But what I like about this is I think you'll see more of it because they made the changes to the side tech. So it'll be easier uh, to, to get available. The Walking Stuka, 60% weapon cooldown and reload. At Vet three, if you if you land some good hits with this thing, uh, walking stukas I think are going to be a little bit more ubiquitous in this patch. The tiger, the DAC tiger is forty percent. I think actually that might be the same as Vermont. That's still going to be nasty. Rest of the area are treated like a main line, so only ten percent received accuracy at Vet one. Um, I, I think this is fair. That like they're essentially riflemen with a sprint, uh, passive sprint. Um, so I, I think you'll continue to see Bersalieri, especially in like 1v1s and 2v2s, but it won't feel oppressive. Uh, Guastatori, 25 health at Vet 3. I, again, they didn't touch the received damage, the flat like damage reduction multiplier that they get, or the Panzer Grenadiers or the Stoss Troop, and I, I wish they would. These are still going to be very strong and very, very cost effective considering the reinforcement cost for all the other elite infantry have gone up so much. All right, and that's essentially it. All right, so even as a TLDR, this is going to be way too long. So I just want to highlight a couple things here. One, I think MGs are much more viable and going to be much more effective at crowd control. I think artillery is going to be far more important, especially mortars in the early game to deal with MGs, but then also to inflict manpower bleed on your opponents. I'm really excited to see uh, where the build orders go. I think you're going to see USF do a whole bunch of different things. You're going to see commando heavy builds. You're going to see weapon support center heavy builds. You're going to see paras and rangers more than regular rifles. Uh, I think on the Brit side, it incentivized commandos and Gurkhas over infantry sections. For DAC, 
you'll see more assault grenadiers you'll see a lot more vehicle play i think in general it's going to slide back towards vehicles so uh in like 1.7 you saw light vehicles become uh really important because the uh, infantry ttk was so high vehicles are really uh valuable and then in 1.8 it backed off quite a bit because they can't became so expensive but i think now because they're going to prevent you from having uh, systemic manpower bleed. Vehicles are going to be a lot more viable light vehicle builds. On the USF side, I imagine you'll see more weapon support center half-track play, potentially into the motor pool. Um, you'll see more standard Shermans. And then on the DAC side, I think you'll see more tier two and tier three at the same time. So flak for laying eight rods, stug Ds, wreckers all in the field at the same time. Uh, in general, I think this is a great step lots of optionality lots of different builds uh makes the game more exciting for everyone um the only thing that i think is a little frustrating is maybe you're still going to see the panzer grenadier company meta for wehrmacht um but with the nerfs to the at guns and the bo the buffs to tier two maybe now it'll just be jaeger spam so who knows but uh that's all i got on this one we'll see how it plays out i'm gonna go uh check out the new observer mode see if i can cast a game or two let me know what you think. Let me know your takeaways, your thoughts on the patch. Um, that's all for this one, uh, and we'll see you in the next one.